All right, and on to passage two. So we go straight to the questions. And once again, we've got this very difficult question type, paragraph uh, matching information, another summary, and some matching uh, people with, what do they say? Statement with people. All right, so of course, straight to the summary, and you're going to start scanning, or you're going to start looking for things uh, to scan for. And there's a name over there that's quite nice. Um, there's Asian over there, maybe. Church again, Asian again, Asian again. All right, so we could look at look for Asian. Okay, so this this process takes you a few seconds. You 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 open your open the the passage. You go straight to the questions because you've got lots of experience. You know you're going to start with this summary then you're going to immediately look for some words to scan and then go and start scanning so 20 seconds and you're already scanning for ooh, what are we scanning for church somebody church and asian professor george church so scan 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 ben novak dna scan scan michael archer um we did see that um there are names here so if you want you at this stage you could underline these names as you see them it's not a problem but remember you're going to be Beth Shapiro you're going to be re repeating in your head church 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 Novak Novak that's a good thing to notice the, 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 this name appears again and again um, remember they introduced it all the way up here but uh, be careful with this question type it doesn't mean that that I will only mention him once in this one he actually talks there and then he talks there again so it's a good thing to notice and anyway here we get uh, professor church and Asian should be Asian elephant great all right so <clears throat> we can maybe have a little look over here but I really doubt it this is a nice big paragraph they've divided this um, summary into three paragraphs but uh, it actually is just coming from one paragraph as we can see Right, you could go and look at this and see if you can find it at the end, <coughs> reduce temperatures, but I don't think you need to. I mean, it, it is right there. So you could, that'll take you one second to just go and do. If you can't see it, you can't see it, don't waste time. So we move on. Start doing the answers. Him and his team are trying to identify that. So, of course, we've got a, um, a noun over here, and it's the, so it can be any kind of noun. It can be single, plural, or uncountable. Uh, no extra information so um, which enabled mammoths to live in the tundra tundra is quite a strange word so I just want to go and find tundra you can't really paraphrase tundra and oh there we see tundra down there all right so what else do we want to see we're trying they are trying what are the they trying to do they're trying to identify something which enabled mammoths to live in the tundra. Identify, I think, is important there, because it's identify the answer. So they are trying to identify. What are they trying to identify? And so mammoths to survive in the tundra, we're in the sentence. And for me, I know that pinpointing means identifying. Um, maybe you didn't know that. And so is there any... So I know... Uh, that we're pinpointing the genetic traits and identifying the genetic traits and so that's the answer let's just look at any other way which genetic traits made it possible for mammoths to survive the something which enabled mammoths to live mammoths to survive enabled made it possible is enabled and then which gen the genetic traits which made it possible this which could actually go there as well uh, it's the grammar is that um, sometimes uh, there's it's a difference between a statement form and a question form of the sentence structure don't worry about too much too much about that that which can be there or there don't uh, choose pinpointing because I think some students will see um, which and then pinpointing comes before which but pinpointing here is a gerund, and it, it just doesn't fit. This is what we're looking for. You do need to um, just check that we're allowed two words, and of course we are. 
So, genetic traits. I think it's not too bad. Uh, it was definitely easy to find the sentence because there were lots of keywords. Enabled, made, made it possible to, mammoth, tundra, live, survive. They were all there. And then there wasn't too many, there weren't too many other options. All right, according to Church, introducing Asian elements would involve certain physical adaptations to minimize. Now, that's going to help us minimize. We know what minimize means. We, it means reduce or make lower or make as low as possible. What are we going to minimize? Oh, and again, we're looking for a noun. So this is, I would look for physical a adaptations, but this one, minimize. There, the similar sort of thing is, again, when you see those in front of the nouns, Definitely look for those um, because <coughs> they're not uh, very, they, 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 they'll paraphrase it, but you will understand the paraphrase. It means make lower, and there's not many difficult ways of saying that. So, physical adaptations. There's adaptations. And now basically all, all we want to do is Look for minimize, really. So adaptations would include smaller ears, but that's not minimize. That's just um, an adjective. It's saying that ears are smaller. To minimize is a verb. We want something with a verb feeling. Thicker hair, extra fat. Purposes of reducing. That's making lower, minimizing. Heat loss in the tundra. And all trains, uh, blah, 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 blah. All right, so I like reducing for minimize. So therefore, the answer should be heat loss. And then just read it to see if it makes sense. Introducing Asian elements would involve certain adaptations to minimize something. <coughs> and a good thing to notice here is all for the purpose of uh, reducing. And that's that use of the infinitive. I don't know if you've seen my infinitive gerund video. The third use of the infinitive is to say why. And uh, it's this too. To minimize, it's the third use of this infinitive. Often at the end of a sentence, why do we do something? And then we use an infinitive. I went to the shops to buy some milk. So to minimize, and that meaning can be paraphrased as for the purpose of. For the purpose of reducing is to reduce or to minimize. So we're looking for a noun, and there it is over there. Again, two words. I don't think it's too much of a problem. Right. To survive in the tundra, the species would need to have... Actually, that's the same use of that infinitive. For the purpose of surviving in the tundra. The species would need to have the mammoth-like features of thicker hair, something of a reduced size, and more something. Now, <clears throat> definitely please notice here, we've got a group of three noun phrases. And you, you'll see in my task two course, I often talk about groups of three. It's a very common thing in English and I suspect in other languages because the human mind likes groups of three. It's a very nice number for our mind to deal with. So um, use groups of three in your uh, in your task two. It can be three noun phrases. It can be three infinitive phrases. It can be three uh, verb phrases. But use them uh, anyway. So we've got and 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 in reading, notice the groups of three. So we've got thicker hair something of a reduced size and more something where's a group of three in this text and we've got thicker hair over there so this is now actually in a group of three smaller ears thicker hair and extra insulating fat there's our group of three nouns we've got thicker hair hair smaller what so they've just switched it around of a reduced size Actually, like in task one, when we do uh, noun phrase one, noun phrase two, they switch between noun phrase one, noun phrase two. They often do it in the reading and the listening. So this is ears of a reduced size, uh, noun phrase two. And in the um, text, it's noun phrase one. Smaller ears, noun phrase one, ears of, there is our um, uh, in, uh, preposition, a reduced size. Now, many students will, um, will write... Uh, smaller ears and that would be incorrect be careful of that this is the the smaller so i've often seen ielts do this where if you repeat the thing 
uh, then it's wrong. So don't repeat it. Smaller ears of a reduced size, it's repeating the idea of smaller. So it can't be smaller ears, that would be wrong. Ears of a reduced size. And so this is going to be very easy because it's the third one in the group. More something. Can you see the synonym for more? More is extra. So we also say insulating fat. I guess you could just say more fat, but we're allowed two words. We're not repeating if we say insulating fat. So I would put the whole thing just to be safe. More insulating fat. All right, I just need to insert something here um, because as you can see, we've got heat loss and then ears and then insulating fat. And that doesn't follow the order in the text because uh, ears is there and insulating fat is there. And then after that is um, heat loss. And that's going to confuse a lot of students, I know, and it's going to make you panic and say, OK, but I thought that in the summary they would follow the order of the text. Uh, so what's happening now? And to tell you the truth, I can't, I can't give you a 100% answer because IELTS can do whatever they want. In 99% of the summaries that I've seen, and I've seen a lot of summaries, they do follow the order of the text but i have seen it sometimes very rarely where they don't um, but one thing that i can tell you um, for sure is that they can if it's inside a sentence then they can go backwards i'll show you what i mean this is all one sentence and so if it's all inside a sentence, you've got two or three answers inside a sentence, the same sentence, then they don't have to follow the order. So I don't want you, I don't want it, you to um, panic because of this. For summaries, they do follow the order. But if it's inside a sentence, then they don't have to follow the order. That's the rule as far as I can see. There might be one summary out of a hundred where they go backwards, but I wouldn't let I wouldn't um, let that worry you, and I wouldn't let it affect your strategy. It's very very unlikely that you're going to get that, except if it's inside the same sentence, then they can uh, change the order. I've actually seen it with other gap fills as well. If it's inside a sentence, they can change the order. All right. <clears throat> I think, yeah, okay, that's enough about that. Great. So this is not so bad, actually. Um, so for one, two, three, four, four, four marks that you can definitely get. Repopulating would impact environment, which could help to, again, this infinitive form, to reduce temperatures and decrease something. So we're going to look for decrease, meaning of uh, synonym for decrease. We found the, the temperatures reduced temperatures this grass growth we're talking about grass growth re okay it's not it's not there reduce temperatures and mitigate emissions so mitigate it's a difficult word um, it does mean decrease or make less so we're definitely looking at that but if you didn't know what mitigate means you could have kind of guessed it because again we've got the similar noun structure we've got two things joined by and here we had three things joined by and those ands are important let me just highlight them to show you that they are structural ands this one makes a, a group of three uh, no 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 not that one that one this one makes a group of three and this one makes a group a, a pair of two and this same structure pair of two nouns over here there's the and so what are we decreasing so you can kind of guess we've got the reduced temperatures there's our and there's our um noun and mitigate you can guess that mitigate means decrease so what was it emissions Right, so that would be very nice um, if we got something like this. It's one, two, three, four, five. We can be pretty sure of these five. Uh, and then 
these others are going to be very difficult that's difficult and these will will probably be difficult but at least we've had we've got a good start and we can feel confident this can take uh geez i mean okay look I've, it's taken me 12 minutes but really in the in the test when i'm not teaching it it can take you five six minutes so you can have lots of time for all of all of this other stuff right let's move on what are you going to do next i would leave this for last this is very difficult um remember often we have something that's in here in one of these but in this case i'm gonna i'm gonna leave it because i want to look at these because i can find these and then hopefully we can match some of them up so i'm going to go into this question type next if you want to go here i, I, I actually wouldn't advise it because th this question type really eats your time and the question types that eat your time you want to leave for last so i wouldn't advise going here this one you can get some marks over here right so what are we going to do of course we're going to immediately just go and find these names but we're going to find them all over the place not only once uh, as we saw they um, occur multiple times so you're going to have to start at the beginning and scan everything right so ben novak michael archer beth shapiro ben novak michael archer beth shapiro and then it's just time to scan so we see scanning uh, we see ben novak over there I'll just go through and find the names. There's Michael Archer over there. Scan, scan, scan. Beth Shapiro over there. But then don't stop because often, they, as we saw, they are repeated. There's Novak again. Keep on scanning. Novak again. This is all about church. So it's church, church, church. So there's nothing there. Uh, but we do see Shapiro over there. She continues over there. Right. So now what we want to do is decide which one we're going to look at first and um often i'll just go and look and see who has spoken a lot and who just sometimes somebody just has one or two sentences so i'll try and find the 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 ones where they didn't say a lot so you've got to try and take a look at um how much they spoke now, if you actually read, not really read, um, uh, I think skim through this, you'll see that none of this is actually what Ben Novak said. They're just saying that he is, and then lead researcher. So that verb is not stated or said or f has the opinion that or whatever. So there's actually nothing there from Ben Novak. Uh, Michael Archer is, is there but then it goes on he points out and then there's lots of um uh what are these called uh, exclam uh, quotation marks <clears throat> so quite a lot from michael archer this is all um beth shapiro so i'm not really seeing more novak 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 according to novak so quite a lot from novak and then that and she prefers and she continues so there isn't really one where they've said just one sentence so that doesn't really help us so all i'm going to do then is um go and find ben novak see what he said and then see if we can match it up with any of these so we saw uh novak was there but we're ignoring that because he didn't say anything and then it's down here is this novak paragraph so for us, the goal has always been replacing. So now it's, it's actually detailed reading that you need to do and just find what he said and read it in detail. Replacing extinct species, suitable replacement when it comes to breeding. These scatter nests per hectare. Passenger pigeon. So there's a whereas. So he's talking about band-tailed pigeons, whereas passenger pig pigeons 10,000 nests so that's about nests really that comparing the two kinds of pigeon now this is not really what he said this is um, what the author has said it's facts that has that is given the given by the author but I still think you should read it just for some background very often it's presented as something that the author said but they link it to Novak so you should still continue to read it, I think. Maybe we can just look at this first. 
a hybridized band-tailed pigeon with an added nesting habits of a passenger pigeon could re-establish that forest disturbance, creating a necessary habitat, a habitat, habitat necessary for a great many other native species. Okay, let's let's just look at these two um, and ignore this for now. Maybe we'd have to go back and see if we can find anything there, but th this, I'll just highlight it all, that and that is what um, <clears throat> Novak said. It might be in here, but uh, you should focus on this, the stuff that he actually directly said first. And maybe that can find us the answer. So there was stuff about nests. There was stuff about forests. Reintroducing an extinct species to original habitat. Yes, I saw habitat could improve the health of a particular species living there. Habitat was over here. Re-establish that forest disturbance creating a habitat necessary for a great many other native species many other native species and here they say a particular species so that's I, I can see a lot of students will choose that one because habitat is there and species is there but this says a particular species and this says a great many species and so that's quite different so I would keep on going Concentrate on the causes. I didn't see anything about that. A species brought back from extension could have an important beneficial impact on the vegetation of its habitat. So there's a species. And vegetation, I remember, vegetation, remember, is plants. And we were talking about forest. And um, so this, what they're saying here is that int reintroducing this uh, could re-establish the forest disturbance and that's a beneficial uh, impact creating a necessary habitat so yes it's that one it's the word forest i think was the was the thing that tied it up because species is there habitat is there but forest is also there in the in the form of vegetation so it's from this sentence over here so that's great. That means we don't really need to go and read this because we've actually managed to find it in what he said directly. 90% of the time it will be here or here. Um, so check those two first because that's like directly what he said. But so I can't say always because sometimes it's linked to what he said and it's something that <clears throat> the author is actually saying but it's connected. Uh, and so it might be in there somewhere, but 90% of the time it's going to be in one of these two. Great, I hope you understand that. Um, so Ben Novak was this one over here. And then let's just check, because we've got four. A current efforts at preserving biodiversity are insufficient. No. Okay. Let's go and look at Michael Archer. <coughs> Michael Archer is this paragraph. Australia, well, you can just read this over here. There is no carnivore now in Tasmania that fills the niche which thylacines once occupied. And you kind of need to go and just look, see what is a thylacine, more commonly known as the a Tasmanian tiger. So it's a kind of animal. So we're looking over here, there's no carnivore. A carnivore is an animal that eats meat, not uh, plants. He points out that, so we want to keep on reading. There, in the decades since it went extinct, there's been a spread in, a, ooh, this is difficult language, threatens the existence of the Tasmanian devils, the island's other notorious residents. So we're talking about a, we're talking about the Tasmanian tiger and the Tasmanian devil. They say it's a resident, but it's an animal. It's an animal can also be a resident of a place. Thylacines. Let's go over here. If that cancer had popped up, it would have burned out. The return of thylacines to Tasmania could help to ensure that the devils are never again subjected to risks. 
very difficult, very difficult. You kind of had to read that whole paragraph to understand what was going on. And there was some very diff difficult language in that paragraph. So when you get something like this and you're just like, what, what is going on? Be prepared to skip it. But we can go and take a look. Don't let it eat your time. That's the thing. Re reintroducing an, in an extinct species to its original habitat could improve the health of a particular species. So yes, I'm, I, I understood this paragraph and I'm feeling good about it because what they are saying is that if they reintroduce the thylacine, then it will help the health of the Tasmanian devil. Reintroducing the Tasmanian tiger will help the Tasmanian devil. That's what that paragraph is saying. But I can understand if you don't understand that paragraph. <clears throat> so let's skip it. Important to concentrate on causes. I didn't see anything. Current efforts. I didn't see anything. This is a clue. Um, and we, we see this often. This has got a feeling of a final paragraph. Because we're talking about what is happening now. And often the final paragraph is talking about either now or, or the future. And they're saying, you know, insufficient. They're saying with this is that we need to do more. So it's actually um, talking about the future. Anyway, we're going to look at Shapiro. <clears throat> so the idea of de-extinction, we can reverse this process. Species no longer back to life. No. I don't think we can do this. There's no way to bring back something. Take the DNA as a template. Insertion of strands. Mm. So the main thing about this paragraph is this sentence, the, the negative. He's saying, or she's saying, I don't think we can do this. Let's go on. There's more Shapiro down here. Many of the technologies can be used as a form of genetic rescue. She prefers to focus the debate on how this emerging technology could be useful. It's just detailed reading here, unfortunately. And you've got to just take a deep breath, read it slowly, and try and understand what they're saying. <clears throat> Went extinct in the first place. How we could use it to make genetic modifications. There's an in incredible, incredible moral hazard. Not enough. <clears throat> and we have to take some risks so probably not important to concentrate on the causes and i did see something like that she prefers to focus to focus is to concentrate on the causes how this could be useful and here's the cause why they went extinct in the first place that is the cause so she prefers to concentrate on the causes so that's fine I'm happy with that as C. And then I did see something about sufficient, insufficient um, is not enough. What we are doing today is not enough. It's a very, I've seen it quite a lot, this um, uh, synonym pair, enough and sufficient. They use those as um, synonyms or paraphrase quite often. So remember enough and sufficient. Often when you see enough or su let's say you see sufficient in the questions it will be enough in the um, text all right so not enough is there as well and then you can basically just guess the other one because you're quite confident about these three so we can just definitely fill in a over there they won't leave out one of these if there's if there's only a few of them if there's like five over here then that maybe they'll leave one out but if there's only three they're not going to leave one out Oh, I think, what, what, what was I doing? Oh, sorry, that should be B. Right, okay, so I'm happy enough with that. That was quite difficult. Um, it'll, it'll use up a bit of your time, but it's doable. You could get three out of four there. Right, and then you need to check your time, and we're going to go fairly quickly through this because uh, at this stage, you're running out of time. But what we always want to do here is first we want to see is there anything in here any one of these that is in here and remember this was genetic traits you can quickly look through that again uh, and read through these and i don't really see it it's not very clear so 
maybe we can look again later. But I just want to um, first point out that we have used some paragraphs and we haven't used other paragraphs. So we've used that. We've used that, that, and that. So we haven't used A and C. So <clears throat> that's where you want to start looking for these because IELTS tries to use all paragraphs. Not always. This is very important. Not always, but generally they do try and use all paragraphs. So yes, of course, we're going to go and look at these other paragraphs later. But all I'm saying is that you want to start with the paragraphs that we haven't used. A reference to so read them first reference to how further disappearance of multiple species could be avoided wonder maybe avoided is what we want there further disappearance avoided a way of reproducing an extinct animal using the DNA of only that animal maybe we, I saw DNA Reference to a habitat which has suffered following the extinction of a species. A point at which a particular species, a point, at a time when that species became extinct. Right, not easy. You're going to do a bit of guessing here. And so we want to go to paragraph A. And actually, unfortunately, we need to do some detailed reading over here. Right, so I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'll leave you to read it. Um, but this is important over here. Can you see which one that is? The passenger pigeon's existence came to an end. That means it went extinct on 1 September 1914. So can you see any one of these? <clears throat> it went extinct, became extinct at a point. What this is, is a point in time. So that definitely helped us. And then actually there was another one in A, fortunately for us. Uh, this is a, definitely a clue. Um, the premise involves using cloning technology to turn DNA of extinct animals into a fertilized embryo. And so that is a, a way of reproducing an extinct animal using the DNA of only that species. It gets a little bit more complicated because they use the word only in that question but I'm not going to go through that now this was actually enough um, for you to to take a guess it would have been a, a close enough guess maybe I should quickly explain it <clears throat> You see DNA was used again over there so some students will want to guess this paragraph but here they're saying take the DNA of existing species so um, that means you're not using the DNA of the extinct species only so that's why it's not this one over here all right but yeah now it's getting very very tricky and um, we, we got to start guessing at this stage You've gotten two from A, <clears throat> and at this stage, if you're running out of time, it's not a bad idea to just guess C. Unfortunately, in this case, it turns out that they wouldn't, it wouldn't be there, but generally, if you take it on average over all the tests, it wouldn't be a bad strategy. <clears throat> right, let's look at these last two quickly. Where are they? Here. A reference to how further disappearance could be avoided. Now again, this is talking about could be avoided in the future. This is that hypothetical use of could um, that we often see in the second conditional. So this is talking about the future. And where do we go and look for the future? We actually go and look very often in the last paragraph for the future. And, and yes, it is there how we could use it to make genetic modifications which could prevent mass extinctions in the future. Could there is that could over there. Be avoided is prevent, I think it was. Prevent, yeah. And mass extinctions is um, multiple species, many species. 
So the clue there, I know you, were, uh, you would have gone and looked for it over here if you had time, but if you don't find it over here, be aware of this future thing. And if, if a question is talking about the future, start with the last paragraph or the, lo the last two paragraphs, because that's very often where they're talking about the future. It's a standard essay format. Give the problem, discuss the problem, and then discuss how we can solve the problem in the future. So that was definitely F. And that could have been gotten if you went there because of this future could. And then finally, habitat which has suffered following the extinction of a species. Uh, actually, we saw that before we saw habitat, so maybe that would have, would have helped you. Um, we were talking about habitat in this paragraph over here. Uh, they mentioned it a couple of times. There's habitat over there, and I think it's somewhere over here before. So they're discussing the pa thousands of passenger pigeons were wrecking trees and branches, destroying the habitat. Um, and the suffered is the negative, the wrecking. So we can quite confidently go with D over there. Basically, that paragraph is saying that this one went, one of them went extinct and then another one came in and destroyed the habitat. Anyway, uh, that would have been more detailed reading. These last two, maybe that one and that one, <coughs> you kind of had to, ha had to just guess. We could have gotten them because that could taught us about the future and that habitat, we dealt with habitat before. But that's a bit lucky. It won't often happen like that. You would have to actually basically just guess those, depending on how much time you had. All right, so this was difficult, definitely. I think we could have gotten one, two, three, four, five there. Uh, maybe three there. That wasn't too bad. And then depending on the time and uh, exam strategy, we could have gotten another two there, I, say, uh, I would have thought. Uh, yeah, okay, great. Let's um, move on to... Passage 3, um, these Cambridge 15s are actually looking pretty difficult so far. Right, let's move on to passage 3.